information, but one of the things that makes Salina so amazing is look around the room. Look how much support we get from parents. Like, we have the best parents, and y'all send us the best kids, because you don't keep the best kids at home, right? You send us the best kids. So, um, and um, this morning, we're just going to... I want to share a little bit about us and about our school and what we um, plan to accomplish this year and how you can be involved and hopefully have some time at the end also for you to, if you have questions about things. So I'm just going to tell you, don't believe everything that you see on Facebook. <laughs> we had some we had some teachers, some parents say, hey, I know I'm going camping because my child says that we're supposed to bring marshmallows. And uh, the teacher's like, what, I don't know what you're talking about. So just know yesterday we had the uh, Cub, uh, Cub Scouts person come to talk to the kids during, we figured it out, we put two and two together. Cub Scouts person came to talk to the kids during lunchtime, so the kids went home, they understood they're going camping, they need marshmallows. So um, when I was a teacher, I, I always used to say, you know, don't believe everything your child says about me, and I promise not to believe everything your child says about you, because we hear a lot of crazy things. So um, just a little bit about me, um, well just a little about our meeting, I'm just going to share a little bit about myself. I also want to introduce you to our, our counselor. I have our team leaders for pre-K and for kindergarten so they can speak specific to your child's grade level. And then at the very end we have our PTA VP and if you're able to stay, she's here and she, um, that's just another way for you to be involved in your child's education here at Solana Primary. So this is my family. Uh, it was probably uh, maybe uh, like a year or two ago. So I have um, uh, my husband Mario, and then I have Alex, my son, he's 25. I have a 21 year old and a 16 year old that's driving and is a senior, and I get nervous every single day when she leaves. <laughs> and so my husband actually walks out every day and watches her back up and tells her, turn the wheel this way. <laughs> oh, yes, it's nerve wracking. So, um, that's just a little bit about me. This is probably my 23rd year in education. So I was a teacher, then I was an instructional coach, then I was an assistant principal. And this is my third year here in Salina as the principal. So um, for those of you that are new to Salina, raise your hand. There's so many people moving in. Are you new to Salina? Oh, OK. So um, for those of you um, that were not here a few years ago, Salina is growing. It is exploding. There's houses going up. I don't know how people can afford these houses, but they're beautiful, and there's lots and lots of houses um, being built, and so our community is growing. And um, part because of the growth, they had to do a reconfiguration a few years ago because we couldn't fit all the students on one elementary anymore. So then when they built the second one, if they put all the elementary students on both of those, they'd be at capacity. So what they what they decided to do, and this was way before I even was uh, in the picture, is they decided to uh, put pre-K and kindergarten here on this uh, in this building all together to give some time for them to uh, build the next schools until eventually we, Pre-K and kindergarten will probably be back on the elementary campus. But this is just an amazing opportunity because everything that we do at this school is with pre-K and kindergarten students in mind. And our and our school, if you look down the hall, it's just from there to there. It's small. We only have 246 students here. And so we're really able to like just take care of them and just nurture them, you know, those those last those first years in school. So we really, really love it here. Um, for those of you that don't know, our school is a Title I school. I mention this because we're going to have a meeting about this on, on Tuesday, if you're able to come. It's a, uh, Title I means we receive special funding that's Title I funding. And we're required to share that with you and also how we spend that money and ways that you can be involved and how that impacts your child. So if you're able to um, be involved in that, I know it's hard because everybody works. So uh, if you're able to, we'd love for you to be involved in that. It will be on Monday at uh, 5, I believe. I think I sent that out already. And um, it, um, sorry, Tuesday, because Monday, we're not going to be here. <laughs> we're not going to be here on Monday. So on Tuesday, if you can be here um, at that time also, it's a way for you to get more involved. We're going to go over on that day our, our parent-student compact. We have a draft, but we want you to have input. We want your input. And we also are going to present to you a draft of our current involvement policy. And we also want you to have input. Look at what we've done in the past and then how can we make it better. So that will be part of that meeting.
and my computer. So a little bit about our, uh, more about our school. So our curriculum that we use in kindergarten, we have to follow the Texas uh, Essential Knowledge and Skills, the Batiks, and you can Google them and they're there. Um, they get updated all the time. This year they were updated. Um, they were approved about two years ago, but it takes a while for them to actually get into the classroom. So this year we are starting the new TEKS for um, language arts. So all the things that, <laughs> it's, all the things that we used to teach in first grade, we're not doing in kindergarten. So we really, really need your help with this. There's a lot of things that have been pushed down. Their ex the expectations have got, gotten higher. Um, and pre-K, we use the, we follow the pre-kindergarten, the Texas pre-K guidelines is what they're called. And then every, every day, your child will have 45 minutes of a specialist class. They go to music, they go to art, they go to the library, they go to computer class. And something that we started when we opened our school is we created a STEAM lab. And that stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So we really want to start to teach our kids. Um, we, we start teaching them how to code, how to problem solve, you know, all these uh, different things that they're going to need for the future because those are the jobs of the future right now. And so, um, and then apart from that, they go to PE every day for 30 minutes. So make sure they wear their sneakers every day because they go to PE every day. <laughs> um, if you have not gotten um, the e your an email with a newsletter, please at the end let me know, give me your email. We use the emails that y'all provide when you register your child, but hopefully you've gotten the, we send them out on Fridays. It's a, like a digital newsletter. I also post it on our Facebook. How many of you follow us on Facebook? Awesome. Okay, it seems we send out a, a communication survey and we notice that a lot of parents follow us on Facebook. We're able to see the analytics, so we see that we are reaching you and getting the information out there. If you don't follow us on Facebook, just like our page and then anything we post will come out on your feed. Um, we do keep it up, and we post pictures. Um, we've already gotten all of the, all of you to give us approval if you're okay with us posting pictures of your kids. Because we're we're in there. Miss Jeannie, our counselor, and I we're in there all the time. And we when we see the kids, you know, doing something neat, we want to snap a picture and share it with you. It's just another way for us to let you know what's happening in your child's classroom and have that transparency. Um, also, our school website is a good place for information. That's more static information, things that don't really change. Um, those are the kind of things you'll find there. And then, uh, as I mentioned, I sent out that communication survey. How do you want us to communicate with you from the school? And then how do you want to receive communication from your teacher? And, um, and we use that information to, to make sure that we're communicating effectively. So follow us on Facebook. And then, um, just about your students' progress, what you can expect. Um, the first, there's not going to be a progress report the first nine weeks, but then after that, you'll start getting a report card, and you will get progress reports. And there's also going to be a parent-teacher conference day, which is in October, and your student uh, teacher will let you know so you can sign up to come to that. Um, we also provide students intervention at school if they're not making progress just with the instruction in the classroom, we'll start to do small groups and things like that. And also, if you suspect that your child has a delay or a disability, or you notice that their speech may be off, or you notice that maybe they stutter, or maybe there's just something that you think that you have a question about, please reach out to me, your child's teacher, or to the counselor. Um, I believe strongly in early intervention. The sooner you get those, you know, you help them with whatever they need, the, the better, you know, the faster and the, um, we can make progress. And then um, we're also gonna share with you about our counseling program here in our school. And so I put a little camera on here so you can take a picture because those are all really important things <laughs> if you wanna uh, snap a picture of that. Uh, I mentioned our Title I meeting. We also have our watchdog program. I'll let the counselor talk a little bit about that. We already have about 80 dads that have signed up. That's awesome. And um, our, we're gonna have, who has never been to the Salina homecoming parade? Who has never been to one? Okay, you've got to go, so you gotta. It is so much fun. It's, it's one of those really unique Salina community things. You've gotta, you gotta go. Um, so we will be ha we will have a a float from our school, and so on that day, it's we may have two floats. I don't know because we have a lot of people who want to participate. 
it's only going to be for kindergarten right now unless some pre-k parents want to take on that one uh, the pre-k one i don't know we're a little hesitant about putting pre-kers on the book yeah. yes sir sorry to be that guy but the homecoming parade is the 27th not the 17th okay so on this oh 27 yes ma'am okay thank you so much thank you so did you see that I got I to gotta fix that because I don't want anybody to get the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, you said 27? Yes, ma'am. All right, it's on the 27th. Okay, delete, delete that picture and take another one. Here we go. <laughs> it's done. 27. Yeah, don't come on the 17th. Okay, so we're going to have a meeting with, uh, um, with parents that want to participate in creating the flow. And um, it'll be really cute, it'll be really fun, and it's just a really fun community event that you don't want to miss. And then um, last year we started what's called a Kindergarten ABC Fashion Show. And this year we're gonna have to have it on two separate days because we have so many students. Right now we have 194 kindergarten students. It's a lot of kindergartners. So in order to really, um, to have parking, because a lot of parents come to that to have parking and just so that all kids get really good participation we um, are going to do it on two separate days and that will go out in the newsletter so you'll know whether your child's going to yours is going to be on the 10th or on the 11th and then um, we do um, an awards assembly at the end of every nine weeks we call it a celebration of learning and just mark down the date we'll give you the time and that way you can come and you can, um, we'll let you know if your child's receiving an award that day so to make sure that you're here and part of the audience. And some family things that we do, some, some events that we have is, um, we'll have parent trainings, pre k parent trainings. We also have our watchdogs program and our PTA also will have events. Um, we have our back to school dance coming up. It's really a lot of fun. It's just one hour, that's all we can handle, one hour. <laughs> Um, it's really, really fun. Our PTA will be selling concessions that day, so bring cash. Even though she says now they have a little square thing, I'm like, y'all are high tech. Um, and we also have in December, we'll have a Polar Express night so they can come in their pajamas. It's really fun. You can bring, whenever we have events, we make them family, so you can bring the siblings too. And then we have a, a family sea night. And that one's a, a, it's more of that stand scene kind of, of the activities that we have and dads really get into this, I love this picture. They really get into um, the, the activities that we're doing and we have other things that we're planning as well. So those are just some, some of the highlights. All right, so celebration of learning. Okay, we have holiday parties, class parties, and then I already put some of the events we're having. I want to just tell you that I, I don't like asking for money. I'm going to tell you that now. So we only do two fundraisers a year, just because we have to, because we need the money. <laughs> but otherwise, I wouldn't do any. Um, so we only have two. And the only ones that we do as a school is we do the color run. We, don't, we normally used to do it in the springtime, but it would always rain, and I had to postpone it every schedule. So this time, we're like, we're going to flip flop that one. So we're going to do that one first. It's really fun if you want to come and cheer on your runner. It's really fun. And we'll do it during PE time. So we'll give you the PE time so you'll know. And then we'll do one in the springtime. We're not sure 100%. We've been doing um, uh, popcorn from, from Mom and Pop. I don't know if you've ever been to that store. It's in McKinney in their little downtown area. But their popcorn is really, really good. And we've done very well with that one. So we might keep that one. But that one will be in the spring. But we only do two. Now there may be other fundraisers, but that will be from our PTA, and that's they also support our school. But just know that as a school, we only do two. Okay, and I'm turning it over to Ms. Juno. Thank you, Ms. Alvarez, and thank you, parents, for letting me take just a moment to introduce myself and tell you what a school counselor does and exactly who I am personally and professionally. I do live in Salina. And I've been in education for over 35 years now. Amen. So <laughs> thank you. It really is my passion. And I love working with children. So um, yeah. So a little bit about me. I am a mom. I have two grown sons, uh, Ben and Nick. They both live in Texas. I'm a Gigi to these two little precious girls. These uh, Zoe and Ada and my third granddaughter is going to join us this Christmas. Zoe. 
Uh, the kids here call me Miss Jeannie. All right, and um, I graduated from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, which back then was called University of Southwestern Louisiana. Any raging Cajuns out there? <laughs> no? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention our new SEL program this year that we're very proud of. You've probably seen, heard, read, all about social and emotional learning in schools and how important that is today that we teach kids how to manage their emotions what to do with those feelings of anger or sadness so, um, you know they're not going to be happy 24 7 right we're not super super happy at every moment of the day so when you're not feeling happy when you're feeling angry what do you do about those feelings so we te we're teaching kids that through our social emotional program and we're using the Mind Up program this year at Salina Primary, and you can research it online. Uh, the, the Mind Up program was started by the uh, Hahn Foundation, and it's been around in schools. It's used throughout the nation. We really like it because it has lessons specifically designed for this age level, very developmentally appropriate. It's got very easy to use um, materials for the teachers, lots of literature connections and cross-curricular connections, which I really love. And so they can reinforce it throughout the day. So as we become a more mindful campus and learning how to focus and get our brain under control, you might be asking yourself this morning, what does mindful mean? So for us as adults, you know, this is what our brain, for some of you right now, that's what your brain looks like, right? The guy, you know, let's admit it. <laughs> but, but the dog's pretty smart, right? He's walking and the dog's enjoying walking. And so mindful means just being present in the moment. So if I'm walking, I'm walking. If I'm eating, I'm eating. If I'm, you know, sleeping, I'm sleeping. And learning how to kind of clear your brain and get ready and focus on whatever you're you're studying. So when the teacher brings them in from recess, they get mindful and now it's time for math. Let's think about math and focus on math. It's time for reading. These are some of the tools that are used in the program. This is the Mind Up book that all teachers have on campus. Raise your hand if you heard your child talk about a glitter bottle. Anybody? Ask them about the glitter bottle. And their teachers might have said, I think you need to send me and that's just a way, a visual way for them to understand, instead of saying, you need to calm down, because it's very abstract for a young child, so you need to study <laughs> glitter. And so if our glitter's not settled, if we're all upset and we're all anxious and excited, we might look like that glitter bottle when it's all shook up and it's, the glitter's just swirling around. But then when we get ourselves under control, the glitter settles. All right, and we're ready now to be more mindful, to take a moment, and to focus. So our teachers read this book, Happy uh, Mindful Monkey, Happy Panda. Very simple concept to teach the mindful. The panda is so happy, and the monkey's like, why are you so happy, panda? Well, you know, the panda says, you know, when I'm walking, I'm walking. When I'm, I'm eating, I'm eating. When I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. When I'm playing, I'm playing. You know, and so the monkey tries it and starts to understand how he can enjoy things more. Very simple concept to teach them about mindfulness. These are some of our kiddos having some mindful moments. So here at Salina Primary, the lesson is taught on Monday mornings for the first few minutes. We're teaching them you know, the focus for the day, uh, for the week rather, what part, what are we learning. They start out learning about the brain. Believe it or not, the teachers have brain posters, and our kids are learning the parts of the brain, because hey, you can get control of your brain. A very powerful tool we use in this program is the Synergy Chime that you see up in the corner. Some of the teachers use an app on their phone, which is the same concept, and it's just a moment when that chime rings, hey, we're transitioning something else. Let's get real quiet. Let's take a deep breath. I like to call it a belly brain breath because it comes to your belly, goes to your brain. And blow it out slowly and then they're ready to be mindful and pay attention to the lesson. And so they practice the little, this is called, we call it a pretzel to breathe. You probably maybe seen your kids twist their hands. The only reason why we would do that at this age level, the pretzel is just a way we get them 
to focus a little bit easier because if their hands aren't occupied, sometimes you know they're playing with their shoelace and they're playing with their neighbor's shoelace. And so having their hands doing something helps them learn, just calm down and focus and be ready for the next lesson. So when you start to hear the chime going off throughout the classes, you might hear your child talk about that. You might hear your child say, I think I need to practice on breathe. And you see this little girl, she's doing it in the hallway. They're not in class, she's in the hall. She just decided, I need to practice on breathe. So, and there's the teacher with the brain coaster. So that's about Mindful Monday. A little bit about myself, just in counseling and what I do on an L uh, primary campus. How many of you had a counselor in your elementary school when you were growing up? See, I see just a few hands. So I didn't, I know, and this is sometimes a mystery to some parents. What does an elementary counselor do? So I am a member of the American School Counselor Association, ASCA, and I follow the 80-20 rule, 80% direct student services. Um, our day should be spent working with students directly and being their advocate, seeing what they need, seeing that they're getting their academic and emotional needs met in the classroom. And so that's done through classroom guidance, small group, and individual counseling. Counseling, I want to just emphasize that. So not therapy. I'm not a licensed therapist, and I don't do long-term therapy. All right, we're just talking about talking with kids, helping them to work out problems or situations. And I do a lot of classroom guidance at this age level. I also, the other 20%, I work with system support. So you do get information from me about programs, assistance, resources in the community that you might be interested in. I'm also part of the Watch Dogs program. This is brand new for me, and I'm very excited about it. And wow, I am just overwhelmed at all the response from the dads I've gotten already. I'm so excited to work with, with you in this program this year. Now, if you haven't signed up for it yet, there's still some more sheets here. If you're a dad out there and you're saying, I don't know, I don't know if that's my thing, just come on out to the social anyway. Ice cream free, it's a fun time with your child. And then you can hear about it, and after, you're under no obligation to sign up if you think it's not something that you're interested in. Uh, and uh, like I said, anytime you need anything, you're not sure, Give me a call and I'll see if I can find out where in the community you can go to get help with that situation. That's what I'm here for. I do classroom guidance. Some of you mentioned to me as I walked in the door that your child already mentioned that I visited the classroom. And typically when I walk in the classroom, I'll teach them an important concept like maybe personal safety or anti-victimization. Bullying, I'll teach them about bullying, about uh, how to handle their feelings, about anger management. Um, during Red Ribbon Week, we talk about making healthy choices. So, uh, my first lesson was on exactly what does the counselor do and the story and the puppet. I use a lot of puppets in classrooms. The rabbit listened. So, poor little Taylor was so upset because someone knocked down his block tower. Can you imagine that? And he could have knocked someone else's down, or he could have ran and hid, or he could have thrown them all in the trash. But in the end, the rabbit listened, and Taylor decided he was going to build a bigger, better one. So that was a, that was a little lesson, and I stay about 30 minutes. That was our first lesson, and that's the type of lessons I do for your children. Our ice cream social will be next Thursday evening here at Salina Primary. It'll just be an hour. It'll start at six o'clock. And then you, when you're at the social, if you do decide you want to be part of that program, you'll go to this district's main website to sign up for your time slots and to do your uh, background check. If you need to reach me, the best way is email. But I know some of you want to meet face to face to talk to me about prob problems or situations, and I understand that. But I don't want you to take off work and be disappointed and come out. As you saw, I'm in classrooms a lot. So please, please call ahead and make an appointment so I can block off that time for you so you won't show up at school and then find that I'm not available. I am also the site director for Alphabest. Some of you have heard of that program. If you're in need or know of a neighbor or a friend that's in need of an after school program, my kids always went to after school program. And I was so thankful that I had a safe, structured place for them to go after school. And I want you to have that same 
thing available for your children. So the Alpha Best program is here. We, we're in the district. And so they don't pay me for mentioning this to you, by the way. I get paid the same amount from Alpha, whether I have five kids or 100. But I just want you to know that service is available, and it's here every day. We have our own room this year. Thank you, Ms. Alvarez. <laughs> and it goes till 6.30 in the evening. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. She's one of our pre-K teachers, and she's going to talk a little bit about our pre-K program. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, um, as Ms. Alvarez said, our curriculum is based on the pre-kindergarten guidelines. Uh, in our classroom, in pre-K, we learn through playing. You might come in my room and you think the kids are just playing, but they're actually learning. They're active learning. They're going to learn how to read and write and do letters and all that stuff just by playing. Some of the things they're gonna know by, they should know by the end of pre-K is they're gonna know how to write their name, they're gonna follow a routine, they're gonna identify at least 20 uppercase and lowercase letters and sounds. They are gonna recognize written numerals from zero to nine. They can count to 35 route counting. They, some of them might begin to write some words based on sounds and they can listen to a story and answer some questions or recount a story too. In pre-K, we're um, planning to have one field trip um, to help for the cost of the field trip. We are actually selling t-shirts. So if there's any pre-K parents here, please buy some t-shirts because we need the money. <laughs> um, we only send um, report cards one for every nine weeks, so it's going to be four of them. We do not send progress reports, so you know. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Now we're going to have uh, some of our kindergarten teachers. These are our kindergarten team leads. So we have uh, 11 kindergarten teachers. Come up here, ladies. Don't be shy. <laughs> and this is Ms. Potter and this is Ms. Fowler, and they're both amazing. Thank you. Okay, here we go. So as Ms. Alvarez said earlier, kindergarten is not kindergarten anymore. Kindergarten is pretty much first grade. So by the end of kindergarten, your child needs to know all of their upper and lowercase sounds and letters. Um, 75 sight words, and those are what are in your folders. Um, last week was I, A, V, and two. This week is and. And, uh, yeah, so, anyway, we need y'all, yes, <laughs> we need y'all's help in that because they have to know 75 of those before to be successful in first grade. Um, they need to be reading at a level six, and I meant to bring a book, but I forgot, but it's tell me two or three sentences on a page. Um, like I said, it's not play in the home center and play it anymore. Um, they need to be able to count to 100. They need to be able to add and subtract to 10, uh, count by fives and tens, write a complete sentence, including capital letters, punctuation, and they need to be able to illustrate a picture with great detail. So, hard work. We appreciate all your help. <laughs> all right, um, progress monitoring. We do do four report cards. You will get one at the end of the nine weeks, and then every three weeks we send out a progress report. Um, it just says, and we do do grades, letter grades. So, if you have any questions about that, you know, if they do all their letters and sounds, then they get 100. So, and um, science and social studies is participation, so they'll get hundreds on that too. Um, oh, we use a program called ESGI. It's weekly assessments with letter sounds and sight words. We just call them up to our computer. Do you know this letter? Yes, no. The sight words as well, and that's where you get your report for grades from. No? All right. <laughs> She's here for moral support. <laughs> okay. So folders. You will receive quite a few folders. The daily folder is usually blue. If your teacher does something different, then know that they all have the same thing inside of them. Um, blue folders. Check daily, please, for notes and behavior. That's where, and that's where the sight words are. That's where the behavior calendar is, and all that good stuff. Um, 
we will start a red poetry folder on Monday the 23rd. And there's usually two or three points that we've done in class. We call it buttering the sight words. You just highlight the sight words we know. We read it together. We talk about it. We do all this all week. And then it comes home on Monday. So they should be pretty um, fluent in that point, or they should at least know what it's about and pick out their sight words and all that good stuff. But y'all can read it together. Um, and then on orange, we have our um, line our orange folders where it's, we send home work, the office, and some notes, anything from the district goes home in that as well. And please send those back, call them. Um, money, this is the favorite part. Uh, please do not put money in backpacks. We do not check backpacks. And most of them have about 30 zippers. And we don't look at them. We don't look at them. So we prefer you put it either in their folder, or you could go on the Salina homepage under parents, it says my school bucks, and you just, it's like a little card, a debit card or whatever, you just add money to it. I did it this morning for my daughter, it was super easy. And you can also get alerts when your account goes below a certain amount of money. So if you want it to alert you after it's below $10, it'll send you an email and you can just reactivate it or whatever, put more money on it. Oh, the wonderful snacks and ice cream. Um, oh, if you do send money, please label it. I know we had a kid walk up the other day and whipped out a 20. And we were like, what is this for? <laughs> Are you buying t-shirts? Or is it lunch money? What, what, I don't know what this $20 is for. So please label the money, because they don't know, just like they think they're going camping. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> and they were like, I don't know, my mom just gave it to me. Um, so we put it in the cafeteria. So snacks. Snacks are available every day, and they're 75 cents. And it's usually a bag of chips. There's gummies. Um, what else? Rice Krispie treats. Rice Krispie treats. Thank you. And they can buy those every day for 75 cents. And they have to eat their lunch. And I think it's the last 10 minutes. They say, OK, if you have snack money, come get a snack. Same thing with ice cream. That's only on Fridays, and it's a dollar. Fridays are pretty crazy with the dollars. Like I said, people are just putting the dollars out. You have no idea what they're for. Uh, and those are only on Fridays. And the problem is that we faced last week that I know a lot of kids were really upset when they went home is they brought their lunch and then the uh, cafeteria monitor said, okay, if you have ice cream money, come get your ice cream. Well, they didn't know if they had ice cream money or not. And there were lots of tears. It was really devastating last week. <laughs> so, you can put it on their account, just please let them know they have money on their account, because I don't know if they have money on their account or not. Um, and they have little cards, if you look all the way back in the back of that door, there's that orange square. Inside is all those little cards, and they have a barcode on it, which is also their ID number. So they go get their card, they scan it, and uh, Miss Stephanie knows that they can buy ice cream or anything. So. Um, there is a little form you can fill out if you don't want your kids to buy 